Good morning to you on this Wednesday, the 19th of August, 2020. Lovely that you've been able to join us today for morning prayer, again outside here in the rectory garden. So a very warm welcome to you. And let's just pause as we begin our worship together. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes that you might steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out? You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our appointed psalm today is Psalm 77. In the day of my trouble, I have sought the Lord. I cry aloud to God. I cry aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I have sought the Lord. By night my hand is stretched out and does not tire. My soul refuses comfort. I think upon God and I groan. I ponder, ponder and my spirit faints. You will not let my eyelids close. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old. I remember the years long past. I commune with my heart in the night. My spirit searches for understanding. Will the Lord cast off for ever? Will he no more show us his favour? Has his loving mercy clean gone for ever? Has his promise come to an end for evermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he set up his compassion in, in displeasure? And I said, my grief is this, that the right hand of the Most High has lost its strength. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I'll mediate on all your works and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who worked wonders and declared your power among the peoples. What a mighty arm you redeemed your people, the ch children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God, the waters saw you and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered, your arrows flashed on every side. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the ground. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths in the great waters but your footsteps were not known. You led your people like sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. In the day of my trouble, I have sought the Lord. God, our shepherd, you led us and saved us in times of old. Do not forget your people in their troubles, but raise up your power to sustain the poor and helpless for the honour of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. 
Our reading this morning is continuation of the story of Samuel. And it's 1 Samuel 28, 3 to the end. Now Samuel had died, and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah, his own city. Saul had expelled the mediums and the wizards from the land. The Philistines assembled and came and encamped at Shoram. Saul gathered all Israel, and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. When Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, not by dreams, nor by Hurim, nor by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek out for me a woman who is a medium, so that I may go to her and inquire of her. His servant said to him, There is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes and went there, he and two men with him. They came to the woman by night, and he said, Consult a spirit for me, and bring up for me the one whom I name to you. The woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the wizards from the land. Why then are you laying a snare for my life to bring about my death? But Saul swore to her by the Lord, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? He answered, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Have no fear. What do you see? The woman said to Saul, I see a divine being coming up out of the ground. He said to her, What is his appearance? She said, An old man is coming up. He's wrapped in a robe. So Saul knew that it was Samuel, and he bowed with his face to the ground and did obstinance. Then Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul answered, I am in great distress, for the Philistines are warring against me, and God has turned away from me and answers me no more, either by prophets or by dreams. So I have summoned you to tell me what I should do. Samuel said, Why then do you ask me, since the Lord has turned from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done to you just as he spoke by me. For the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbour David. Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord and did not carry out his fierce wrath against Amalek, Therefore, the Lord has done this thing to you today. Moreover, the Lord will give Israel along with you into the hands of the Philistines. And tomorrow, you and your sons shall be with me. The Lord will also give the army of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Immediately, Saul fell full length on the ground, filled with fear because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten nothing all day and all night. The woman came to Saul, and when she saw that he was terrified, she said to him, Your servant has listened to you. I have taken my life in my hand, and have listened to what you have said to me. Now therefore, you also listen to your servant. Let me set a morsel of bread before you. Eat, that you may have strength when you go on your way. He refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, urged him, and he listened to their words. So he got up from the ground and sat on the bed. Now the woman had a fatted calf in the house. She quickly slaughtered it, and she took flour, kneaded it, and baked unleavened cakes. She put them before Saul and his servants, and they ate. Then they rose and went away that night. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy. 
to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow came down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me fruitless. But it will accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Our second reading today is continuation of Acts, Acts 4, verses 13 to 31. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realised that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognised them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So they ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do with them? For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them. We cannot deny it. But to keep it from spreading, spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, Whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge, for we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them again, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people, for all of them praised God for what had happened. For the man on whom the sign of healing had been performed was more than 40 years old. After they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them? It is you who said by the Holy Spirit, through our ancestor David, your servant. Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers had gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you appointed to be whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant your servants to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. And now for our Benedictus. You show mercy to your ancestors and remember your holy covenant. 
Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come together this morning, we bring our hands together, looking at our thumbs. We just think of all those teachers at the moment, those who've shown us the way, teachers of faith, perhaps our Sunday school teachers, or maybe those who we've heard preach, our parents, grandparents, carers, who've taught us so much. We pray for our teachers at our schools, colleges, places of further education and universities particularly at this time of turmoil relating to results. For those who had results last Thursday and those who are preparing to receive their results tomorrow, their GCSEs. For the students. And we give thanks also for those who have taught us so much through the University of Life. For those wise men and women words of wisdom that they may have shared with us over the years. We give thanks to them for all that they have taught us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Looking at our index finger, we pray for our government and for wisdom for all in authority. We give thanks that we are able to be in a free society, remaining ever mindful that not everybody is, that we have a vote and we have a governing body. And in a moment of quiet, we pray around for those around the world who don't have that liberty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our middle finger, the steeple of our church buildings. We pray for our churches, for our church community, for Justin, our Archbishop, for Rose, our Bishop, for Joe, our Archdeacon, and for our ministry team here in our benefice, lay and ordain and for all the work that they do. Wherever we may be, wherever our church community may be, we give thanks for that, for the witness of the gospel. For those new to faith, for those who've had a lifelong faith, 
for those who may be exploring faith or questioning their faith. We lift all to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our ring finger, our relationships, we pray for our families and our friends. We pray for any known to us who are struggling at this time in body, mind or spirit. Friends who may be unwell. Family members who may be struggling at this time. We lift them to you, O Lord. For those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. For those who are preparing for funerals. And for those whose anniversaries of death falls at this time. And we lift to you, O Lord, our families and friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for our little finger, we pray for ourselves that today, in all that we ask and all that we do, that God will go before us. Be in conversations that we may have, people that we may meet, that we see Christ in the other and be Christ to the other, to deepen our relationship with God. Heavenly Father, Accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now for our collect for today. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to ask such things as shall please you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all those this day that you love and pray for. Amen. Just a moment with the bird song. Lovely that you've joined us again today. Um, please, if you can, join us for night prayer, which will be at six o'clock. Otherwise, it's morning prayer again tomorrow at nine. Whatever you do today, just please keep well, keep connected, and keep praying. Have a good day. Bye for now. Bye.